Gabigol versus John Beast Madden 24 Ultimate Kickoff Tournament. Um, these guys are friends. They're lab partners, and we're going to be getting into this. At this point in the year, Gabigol is going to be in the Bengals offensive playbook, and John Beast is going to be in – I'm pretty sure he's in the Colts playbook. So, uh, again, kind of a, a good matchup here. These guys are, like I said, they're friends. They uh, they lab together. They train together. So let's take a look at kind of what these guys are going to do. These guys know each other really well. So let's go ahead and get into this. So right off rip, uh, John Beast is in this nickel 3-3 cub defense, and this is really good because the Sen 5 typically can get some pretty nice pressure up the A-gap. Now, uh, he's also going to be basing out of – Pretty much, I think, unanimously Mike Blitz zero. So that is going to be a man-to-man -man alignment, which is going to, as you can see, these safeties are a little bit lower when you're in a cover zero look. And also, he, but but John is going to adjust this a lot. So this, right off rip, we're going to see Gabigol's favorite play. This play is still really effective. Um, this is mesh spot, and we're going to get this post. And what we have here is the reason for this play being so good. In tight slots, you can block your tight end. So because of that, this route combo might be one of the best for this coverage and this defense because what's going to happen is essentially this running back is going to be almost like a slant route, and then this drag is going to be almost like a flat route. But all three of these key routes are going to do a really good job of beating man-to-man. -man. So as you see here, John is actually going to start out with zone coverage, a zone look, and I believe he goes ahead and use some cloud flat coverage here to the right, um, essentially playing a roll cover three. And so what's going to happen is this deep pass is going to get taken back and you're going to hit his user is going to have to go to this post. So because his user, we're putting his user in conflict, the user decides, okay, I'm going to go to the post. So now what's, what's open? Well, the running back will slant or running back Texas becomes wide open, especially when they don't have KOs. And you see that we're going to get a nice little gainer out the bat. Now, Gabigol, in my opinion, uh, what I love to learn as I watch these two players, these two players are probably, I'm trying to think of the best, the top five offensive players in Madden. I feel like these two are on the list. Um, I know Astro, and, and these are, I want to say they're both in the WD crew. Um, and the WD crew uh, is Astro, John, Gabigol. I think there's some other guys in there. I, I know there's a lot of other guys in there, actually. But, but in general, um, you know, these guys are some of the top offensive players in the world. So these guys are some of the top offensive players in the world. Here we go, second play call. Now this time, I think, let's take a look at this, what he did here. So Gabigol, uh, another thing Gabigol was doing that at this point in the year, not very many people really cared about. C.J. Stroud is his quarterback. Uh, Gabigol is one of those guys, like I said, I think offensively he's really smart. And he actually chose C.J. Stroud and utilized C.J. Stroud as the only one in the tournament using this quarterback and the reason why he was using him was due to his release. Um, his release, I believe, is traditional two, which is the second best release in Madden 24 next to the traditional four. But at this point, was one of the best quarterbacks we could do it. Now, what he's going to do here, again, I talked about John Beast is in a Mike Blitz zero man-to-man -man alignment. He's going to motion out this running back, which is going to cause some alignment issues. And he's going to go to the play flood where he has a post, a corner. This is essentially a man-beating concept. And then the running back Texas route, that motion out running back Texas, we'll take a look at what that does. So Gabigol's basic plan, and one of the things that I think Gabigol is really good about him, I think Decroft is also pretty good at this. Gabigol and Decroft both, they play a very similar style in the fact that they typically will have really good pass protection. They have really good pass protection. They don't really have to worry about the blitz, and that, that's kind of typically what you see. John Beast is more of a five-out kind of guy. Astro is more of a five-out kind of guy where they don't typically care to necessarily block it. They just want to dot it. So anyway, you see right here we get man coverage, this Texas pattern. You see there cuts to the inside. It looks open to me right there, but the user is kind of sitting here. Now we take a look up to this. We have the corner on the right wide open, and we have the post open, but due to the kind of pressure, and look how far back Gabigol has dropped. Um, he has dropped almost 15 yards back in the pocket. At this point in the year, it's going to be very difficult for him to make an accurate throw. So he's going to choose. He actually does throw this, and oh, my, kind of out of reach. I don't know if that was an inaccurate or what, but um, – 
Yeah, there you go. All right, so tight slots, halfback week. We'll see what he ends up doing here. And Gabigol is coming out in tight slots no matter what. So I love when Madden's played like this, like you just come out in a formation. I don't like the audible around stuff, even though it is good. Um, I like when you just play kind of old school, one formation. He's going to go to bench. He's got this blue route here to the left. Uh, and then we're going to use a slot apprentice post. We got a streak. We got a corner. And we got a flat. So what what uh, what Gabigol is doing as my – my mouse is going crazy here. Why is it doing that? That's so weird. Uh, he's going to hit that corner wide open. Had the corner uh, with the blitz. That's crazy. Okay, we need to we need to we need to stop that. <laughs> we need to stop that. All right, all right. <laughs> so third down and ten, and we're going to be looking here. Let's see what he calls. Goes to what is this play? Oh, it's mesh spot again. Same setup of mesh spot. Doesn't really have anything. So he is going to end up throwing it away. All right, fourth and ten situation for Gabigol here. Um, John Beast goes to the dollar defense in this situation. Now, why is he going to go to this? He's going to try to get this little loop blitz to come in, these little contained glitches uh, to come in both sides. And then he looks up. It appears like he's going to base out a spinner with backed off. Uh, so we'll see what Gabigol ends up dialing up from a combo perspective. Going to use that motion out running back. Gabigol loves this motion out into a five wide look. He can block his tight end. So you see he's setting up some protection for this. And we'll see he is going to go with a streak. Don't see this combo a lot, but a comeback. This is out of post for a drag, a drag, and a post. So essentially what we have here is a high-low read over here to the left side where we could either throw the comeback or the drag route. And then we have this guy over the middle if the user goes to the comeback route, essentially. So first read is a streak. So you see here, John Beast is going to blitz everybody, right? This guy gets manned up. So John Beast's user is now on an island with this streak. You see how he takes a step to the post. See this? He takes this little step to the post. So Gabigol knows, look at all the space, wide open, and is going to get a nice little catch <laughs> and almost drops it, but is able to get in, and uh, that's going to be that. So now John, we're going to see John on offense. John, to me, is one of the best Madden players to learn from and to watch because John is always going to have something a little unique, and John literally never stops playing the game. So he's going to know a lot of the little things that most people don't. So he's a great player to watch. Gabigol going to be in nickel 3-3. Three, three. Uh, go to inside zone blitz here. And we'll see. I think Gabigol is in 3-3 three, three cub now. So, yeah, I think Gabigol is a 3-3 a three, three cub type player. So we'll see what he does defensively. So here, so already John Beast is doing it. So if you take a look here, he goes to verticals, but he has a slot apprentice in this Jalen Hyatt. So he flips his play. Look what he does. You never see this stuff. He's going to use a tight end wheel route as a clear out for the post. Why is that? You, it's just, I mean, I don't know why it's, a, it's good, but I don't know why it's better than a street corner flat, but it allows him to run this to the wide side. That might be part of it too. Uh, but essentially we have a high low over here to the left. And then we have the user having to kind of basically use this crosser, or we can throw that against cover three to the right. So uh, we'll take a look at the combo here in this a five out combo. So he's going to block the tight end. So now we're maybe setting this up a little bit more for a man to man type setup. Gabigol goes coverage, gets a quick shed animation right there, and um, and and John using RG three, so a lot of variation at the quarterback position at this point in the year. So first and ten, ball on the forty three yard line, gonna go short side bunch. And I think I'm pretty sure Don, John, yeah, John's got double post. He's in the he's in the Colts playbook. Gonna go to curl flat, wide side setup here. Interesting. So he's going to go to curl flat with a wide side setup. So you see this cover three. At this point, this curl route's dead. You can't throw the corner out there to the right. So there's really nothing there, and he ends up getting sacked. These are honestly kind of interesting combos. And, it, and, and you see what's happening is because of the tendencies that John understands that Gabigol and right, they're, they're kind of like, now this is a cool combo too. So, again, we're going to use this tight end wheel as a clear out, and we're looking to throw the corner on the sideline. So essentially here. What you're going to get, I don't know what that is, that's open. And then we hit that tight end over the top of the hard flat defender. So really, really cool little play play design. Again, John is going to do stuff that 
you just never like like there's very few players in Madden that truly are innovators. John is one of them. I think it's because of the fact that he labs a lot with Astro. I think Gabigol to a degree as well. Gabigol is a little bit more of like a systematic player. There's that RPO, and at this point, people weren't throwing that bubble screen, which is kind of interesting uh, to note. But that bubble screen was wide open. Uh, but because because John labs in so much with Astro, and Astro to me is the best offensive player in the world um, when he wants to be. They uh, they're very innovative offensively. There we go. Get that crosser out of the play. P. Reed gets a nice catch. Uh, this is a cool little combo here. Uh, utilize the running back as the clear out instead of this backside guy. This guy's going to be on a drag. We get a nice little clear out, and then we just get a really nice simple simple crosser drag combo. I call this a shallow cross concept because it essentially is. It's just simply high lowing in the middle of the field. Really nice. And now we're going to get into red zone. Red zone has been, um, you know, one of the things that is always important in Madden. And there's always things that work year and out. Um, there's always, there are always uh, good runs, bad runs. He's going to go to 4-4 four, four split in the jukebox. So John using jukebox on bow, able to capitalize on that first drive, gets seven. And now uh, Gabigol has the ball. So we take a look at tight slots again here. It's going to go to mesh spot, I think. Motion out the running back. And now we're going to use – so he's going to play these little games on this motion out. So now why are we running this combo, this mesh spot? Remember last time this guy was manned up, okay? So if that's the case, what Gabigol does a good job of is he doesn't always just put this guy on a streak. So here he's going to put him on a man-beating drag. Of course, I say that he puts him on a streak, whatever. <laughs> But you see here, this is just slant post. This is a streak. There's there's post, and this is technically drag post, but it's the same idea. Essentially, that, that drag underneath is going to do a really good job. Beats man, gets out of there, and gets some easy yardage. I think tight slots is still one of the best. I mean, tight slots is, is just one of those formations that if you master tight slots, it's always going to be really effective. First and 10 situation. I think he's going to go to bench here. Going to motion out that running back again. Uh, and this is – so, okay, so this is really important to identify. So what has John's tendency been with this motion out? Almost always this guy is manning up on this corner. Because of that, this defender is very – is not able to play – he might be able to play an outside there, but he typically is not. Uh, because, again, he's basically manned up. This is all manned up. So because of that tendency, this combo becomes really good because it's very unlikely that there's an outside third defender. So you can manipulate that side with a streak corner and running back out route. So we'll take a look at this. So you see right here, this is man coverage. And off rip, tight end is going to be open vertically or the corner might get open as well. So you see here, he doesn't get screamed at as well, able to pick up the blitz. Why? Again, what does Gabigol do a really good job of? He finds pass protection. This block and release route, for whatever reason, negated the Yagat blitz. See how everyone's picked up? So now this is an easy read. The touchdown, he's got that, he's got that. And, and I mean, <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised that that was where he threw the ball, but I think partly – Partially due to not having seven feet lead, but he had a lot of op a lot of stuff open there. All right, so first and ten, ball on the 40, 41 yard line, going a little zig route. Zig routes beat man coverage. Zig routes have beat man coverage on next gen pretty much every year. Zig routes have been really good for for uh, consistently attacking man to man. All right, so so uh, first and ten, ball on the twenty. Eight-ish yard line, and he's going to go to post wheel drag. So here, and 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 John's running a lot more like cover zero man. Okay, so you see Gabigol is running really significant man beating concepts. You got the mesh, and then we're essentially forcing the user to choose between the in route, which here he chooses. See how he bites back down here, and that's going to leave that open over the top, or vice versa. And Gabigol is able to get the touchdown. 
So 14-7, uh, both guys looking really good offensively, right, as you would expect. They're, they're, in my opinion, two of the best offensive players in the world. And we're going to get this Bunch Strong Nasty RPO read bubble audible. Again, at this point in the year, you're not going to see as many people throwing the RPOs. Uh, but to me, <laughs> it's just interesting that they didn't really, you know, like they're wide open. So uh, inside zone split, jukebox, fumbles, RG3 catches it, good slide by John. A lot of people wouldn't slide there, and it would be a risk of fumbling again. But because he slid with his QB, uh, he's able to protect the ball. So I think this is uh, this flood with the slot apprentice. So why are we calling this play for the dig and the flat? Just for that tight end flat, basically. Plays cover two. Got that R1 open. Nice read. And that's going to bring up first and ten. Again, at this point in the year, a lot more man coverage than what we see uh, as the year kind of progresses, which is it's kind of interesting because I feel like that's been true for the last three Maddens. Uh, there's a lot lot less uh, man-to-man. More man. It, it starts out as a man-to-man, and then it goes to like a zone almost always. It's kind of interesting. All right, so second and seven. Uh, kind of throwing away third and seven here. Ball on the 10-yard line, obviously hard to score down the red zone, hard to throw the ball, and, and there's some tight windows. Without set feet lead, it's really hard to score in the red zone uh, just because, you know, you can – everything gets knocked out. Able to hit that, nice read, and um, able to get in for seven. So 14-14, uh, three minutes. So Gabigo probably trying to take all of the clock here. He's trying to – uh, just simply going to have 21-14 or even 17-14, just as long as Jombies does not get the ball back because Jombies is going to be getting the ball to start the second half. So Gabigol is going to start with a little basic run call out of this, and John has kind of shifted to a baseline dollar look. Uh, interesting. So now he's going to play a little bit more of a zone-based coverage and kind of adjust out of a DB fire two look. So now you see Gabigol goes to a zone beating combo out of four verticals where we've got the slot apprentice post, and then we have the streak. There's a lot of really simple ways to manipulate. So you see here, this is kind of a double Mabel here to the right side. So at this point, the user has to make a decision. You see how the user is going to go inside. Now, John probably is going to try to break back, doesn't end up breaking back, and then this is open, and you see there. See how, that, see how he tried to break, kind of kind of break back on the route, but anywho. So you're going to see Gabigol start to go. If John's going to play zone, there's a little bit more of a zone-beating concepts that he's going to start to utilize uh, as well. So now we're back. Now we're kind of in that man coverage dollar look at a spinner, and we're going to go to this combo. Uh, I love this play. Uh, I, let's, let's take a look at this here. So we got the slant. So we got the flat, we got the slant, and the Texas. I don't know if I love that, um, but then that out route's so good for spacing the field. Like, I love that out route for spacing the field. All right. Oh, first and 10. Again, at this point, Gabigol's just trying to ensure and make sure that John doesn't get the ball back before half because if he does, then John is put in a position where he can get a quick score and then get the ball to half and then become potentially even up two scores just based off clock management here. So inside zone, that's the reason for that call there. Second down and six. And let's see what he does here. He motion out the running back again. Now this is a man-to-man -man look, right? So typically this guy, it's going to be interesting to see what he's in. Got that Texas route. And going to have to kind of eat that one. So third and six, this is probably the biggest play of the game up to this point because if John gets a stop here, then Gabigol kind of has to go for it on fourth down because of the 55 seconds on the play, on the, on the quarter. So this is a huge play uh, in, this, in this game. Third and six, got a straight corner route, wide open, able to beat man coverage. Great read from Gab. He does get seven. So you see his facial expression. I don't think he loves – I think he was trying to go down. He was probably trying to go down at the one so that he could at least take John's timeouts. What that did, what that just did for John is if John goes down and gets seven or even three, when he comes on a half, he's going to get the ball, and he's actually going to be able to take the lead if he goes down and gets seven. So, anyway, he's going to go to curl flat. 
here. It's kind of an interesting combo. There we go. Flat dig. I like that a lot. Corner route. Gets over the Mabel coverage. Big play from John right off rip. And that's going to be first and 10 ball on the 40-yard line. So he's already pretty much in field goal range. So, I mean, you see this kind of what I was talking about, about, you know, Gab trying to take the quarter because he wasn't able to. Now John is able to put himself in a good position coming out of half. So these route combos are kind of interesting to me. Goes with that. Crosser against man. Really nice read. So now Gabigol, because John almost got down the field too fast, now Gabigol's in a position. Now if he gets if he gets uh if John scores quick, Gab can go get three. Right. So you see how these clock clock scenarios kind of make a big difference. So John is probably gonna run the ball three times. Uh probably gonna run the ball three times. So you see here just run. I don't think he – does he try to score? Yeah, see how he goes down at the one? I feel like that's what Gabigol wanted to do last drive and uh, and didn't end up doing. So now Gabigol is going to try just to get a red zone stop and, and and hold him to three. So second and goal, ball on the two-yard line, fullback dive, really nothing there. So now we're in a third and goal situation. And going to go to that RPO stretch, wing slot stretch. Jukebox didn't work for him. Okay, so see, this is kind of perfect – Perfect storm here, and John's going to be put in an interesting uh, position. So John is going to come out, kind of look at some things. I don't think it's a great decision to go for it on fourth here, and he does call timeout with 10 seconds. Why did he do that? So you see here, like, I don't know why you call timeout, why you call that timeout right there. I think that's a mistake because now you give him, you know, 10 seconds. Should have let that go all the way down to one second, then call the timeout. But whatever. Not that big of a deal, but it's kind of, I mean, it, it just leaves the door open. He is going to go for this, I think. Um, he's got the pivot. Yeah, he's going to go for it. And he has a dot. That's a big, 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 big seven right there. Um, big, big seven in a big situation, and that is going to pretty much take us to halftime. Actually, I am going to look at this. I don't know if Gabigol got. No, Gab is just going to run the ball. Yeah, Gab's just going to run the ball. So that's going to take it to half, boys. All right, so coming out of half, obviously John just scored uh, a big score. And so now he has the ability to be able to go down. If he just puts together a good drive, he's going to go up seven. And even though Gab has played really well, uh, he's going to be down seven. So second and seven, just kind of getting a run off. This is just a standard drive. I mean, there's nothing, you know, it's just like I just need to go down and get seven. Kind of, kind of drive. There's nothing too crazy about it. He's going to go to this curl flat setup. John loves this curl flat setup, and I'm not sure I do. And it, John does a lot of random stuff, too. Like, you see that? Like, who calls that? Like, a, a motioned-out streak with a curl? Like, just kind of odd uh, route combos. It also kind of showcases just the way Madden was played at this point is different than the way Madden gets played at the end of the year. So, uh, streak. So, here we go again. Now, Gabigol is showing man coverage. So, there's, you know, route combos are a little different uh, when, you're, when you're playing man coverage. So, as you see here, he gets a cross man. You could honestly try to throw this deep up to the left or deep up to the right. See, he does throw it to the right, and he's going to be able to beat the press man, and he is going to be able to get seven and talk a little something, something to Gabigol over there in the corner. So, right out of half, comes out, really nice offense, gets his touchdown. And so now all the pressure swings to Gabigol, who has to stay, really has to score seven to stay in the game. And the seven bar half is so big. Like, if it's 24-21, it's a lot different than it's 28-21. So, uh, you know, that was, that was a big touchdown. John going for it on that fourth down was risky, but obviously put him in a really good position to be able to go win the game. So notice here, this is a main coverage little trick with that motion out. That slot corner comes inside, which is going to open up that corner route that he ran, that he's ran uh, before as well. So if he does motion the running back out, watch this slot corner on the left. So see, see how that slot corner takes a step inside? It messes up the alignment for the man coverage, and it allows this corner route to get open against man. So you see here, that guy goes down. Look at this. There's no one guarding that. It's actually tries to cross man it but it's not going to work and gab just gets a bad free form so second and 10 wide open player but just terrible free form and 
There it is. Second down to 10, ball on the 32-yard line, right hash. Notice that Gabigol is pretty systematic in the fact that the tight end is almost always going to be to the wide side of the field. Goes with that comeback, corner route, nice catch. Oh, he didn't catch it. Oh, wow. All right, third and 10. Again, John's doing a lot of stuff. Like, he's trying to cross man and trying to bait certain things. And got the post. Good shed. And now we're in a fourth down situation. Fourth down and 10. Got to have it down for Gabigol. John's looked pretty decent defensively out of half. Gabigol's kind of gotten some unfortunate breaks. One, two, three. Send five. Slant's going to be open over the middle. Post is going to be open. Ends up throwing the post because the user had to use the wheel. Under pressure throw, catches it, and gets a big-time dot. It's a huge throw. It's a huge throw. Uh, very easily could have been a throw out of sack. Very easily could have been a knockout. Very, a lot of things could have went wrong there, but able to get the big play. And first and 10, ball on the 40-yard line. And we're going to get a back off on that right-hand side. And we're going to go man coverage across the board. Nice throw on that corner route and doesn't catch it. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if Gab was using gift wrap. I don't remember if, if Stroud, I would assume Stroud had gift wrap, but I don't know for sure. I mean, that, that, um, uh, that, that seems to, it seems to show that he might not be using gift wrap. Uh, so a little streak, there's the wheel wide open, good, quick read. And, uh, Gab is still cooking offensively guys. I mean, he's got so many, he's had people wide open literally every play. And John's trying to stop him, obviously. So we got kind of a man-beating combo here. I don't love this combo. He's going to throw it away. I don't love that combo at all. Second and 10. Ball on 23-yard line. Right hash mark. And this, this, to me, is good stuff. I love this play. Got that. Nice quick read to the tight end. Out. Get up field. Some easy yardage. And so now we're in a third and two situation. He's going to take his – also, Gabigol plays on conservative at this point in the year. Um, why does he play on conservative? I think he just trusts his offense enough. He doesn't want any fluke of a fumble uh, to, pre to prevent him from, you know, consistently scoring his touchdowns. He's going to go to flood here. Man, ooh, look at that flat route. That flat route won. Wow. Oh, that was – that's an interesting adjustment. I don't know what this is. Is this manned up? I did not play that man coverage. Did not man cover? <laughs> that I didn't love that play call, and I didn't love that. I mean, I feel like John actually had him right there. All right, so first and ten again, tied into the wide side of the field, kind of the standard way to run this formation, and we're gonna get some interest, some really. You know, now what we're getting, I call this getting horizontal. We're trying to really stretch the defense sideline to sideline, mainly horizontally. And I actually like the combos here we're seeing. So you see, uh, let's take a look. There's a running back wide open. Missed him. See how that slant route stops? That's terrible for the game. They've, they've got to fix that next year. That slant route stopping literally took uh, a hot route you know, completely away because you can't really trust it. You can't really utilize it. So here we're going to see a combo. This combo has been good. Got a little ghost route wide open. And he's going to scramble out with Stroud and actually pick up or get to third and inches. So that scramble was huge, huge scramble for him. All right, third and inches. Kind of a big drive here. I think Gab is going to take this. I think Gab is going to take this to the quarter. Let's see here. Yeah, it does look like he's just going to take it to the quarter. So, um, so now we're kind of getting into like, okay, you know, tight situation. He goes in uh, with the little running back zone run, gets the first and goal. I think he's in. I think he's in. Yeah, he's in Bengals. So single back wing pair stretch, not really. Oh, he did get it. Did he get it? Yep, ends up fighting in and gets a touchdown. Okay, so uh, so now now twenty eight twenty eight. So John B's all the pressure, not all the pressure. John's still in a good spot, and he does have like, you know, five four forty. He's gonna start out with a little run play, get some good yards, and you know he's in a situation to pretty much clock this out. 
Looks like he's going to go to smash return here with an out route to the... This is kind of an interesting combo. I don't love that drag right there. It might be the return route. What he's thinking is if this is zone coverage, this guy will stop right in the middle of the field as like almost like a hitch. Uh, so we'll see what he does from a combo, but I think that's it. So, okay, so watch R1. Notice here, right, right there, C, and I guess he didn't stop. I don't know why he didn't stop. Uh, but trying to hit this tight end, not really there. And uh, that's going to bring up a third and two situation. So, again, Gabigol kind of showing. Um, so if you look at this real quick here, you're going to notice inside zone split, but you're going to notice Gabigol is basing out of a cover zero. So mainly man coverage beating combos. Uh, but I think right here this is zone. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. This is why he puts a zig right here. So if Gab has this guy manned up, this zig's going to be open. So look here to the right. Nope, it's cloud. Cloud. We're actually going to send five out of a cover two shell, which now the corner, as you see, is going to get wide open, but he gets a bad overthrow. <laughs> and now Gabigol takes over. And again, at this point in the year, people really weren't blue passing. They didn't understand how important the accuracy was. And we get an inside zone. Second and seven situation. Ball on about the 30-yard line, three minutes. So Gabigol is in a in a kind of an awkward position because he needs to score. And he really needs to score seven. Like scoring three really doesn't help him that much. I mean, it's okay, but he really needs to score seven. And he can't clock the game out. So he's going to have to get another stop, basically. So that's kind of the, the, the awkwardness of the situation. John gets a, a blitz. Here we go. Every key down. Pretty much he's motioning this guy out. We go the corner route. Running back Texas gets wide open. That's crazy. Breaks a tackle. And Gab's trying to score. Now, I think – I mean, that's honestly fine. So he scores seven. Either way, it really wasn't going to matter. He does end up scoring quick. I don't know why he, I don't know why he doesn't have two timeouts either. That's kind of surprising. I don't know. I never saw. I didn't realize that he called timeouts. Him calling timeouts is there may be a reason for it, but really, from a clock perspective, there really wasn't. So now John has to go score seven. And then John is going to have to basically make a decision. Am I going to try to clock this out, score seven, go for two, or score a touchdown, go for two, which he can? Or, you know, kind of am I just going to try to lock up defensively? Now, the way the game's going, you know, it's very likely that if there's any time left for Gabigol, that he is going to be – it's going to be really, you know, not too challenging for him to go get a field goal just by the way he's playing. So you, you really don't want to give the ball back to Gabigol with any time. That's why you see some run, more run calls, trying to really get this thing under two minutes as quickly as we can. And then what he's going to try to probably do is go get a touchdown and then potentially try to either go for two or just ensure that Gabigol does not have the ball back and maybe try to play it in overtime. So you see here, see how he takes it down to the two-minute warning. And – now we're going to kind of get back to kind of some dots here. He's probably going to have to start throwing. He loves to do this, this motion out streak. And then uh, with a drag underneath here probably. And I don't know why he does this curl. He does this a lot, these these backside curls. I don't know why he likes those. I've, I, I don't think I've seen him throw it one time. He's had a curl on a lot of plays. I don't think I've ever seen him throw the curl on the backside. So the receiver, maybe maybe I don't know why he's doing that. For sure. So here, kind of anticipating potentially a Mabel coverage. So uh, Gabigol plays kind of a rolled three. And the running back's going to be open underneath. Juke up field. Nice read. And so first and 10 on the 46. Now, again, we're kind of working the clock a little bit, trying to get this down. Probably going to start with a run. Maybe not. And again, I don't love that combo. It's okay. Just the way Gabigol's playing defense, like short side bunch is is um, would be more effective for the way Gab's playing because he's playing a lot of like cover three to the bunch side. So now here, see how he's rolling that third over the top of the cloud. Yeah, first and ten, we're gonna have to scramble out of there. Actually, scrambles out and gets some yards, and gonna run the ball. 
Second and four is a good rundown. The reason why is because if you don't get it, you still have third down. But if you do get it, you're able to continue to take that clock and put yourself in a position. Again, you see he's doing a really good job with this clock management. Gab's already called his timeout. Gab can't do anything. And so now we're just going to kind of try to put the, put ourselves in a position here to score. And John obviously has his timeouts to be able to kind of control the clock as well. You want to be a little strategic. This is There's a lot that can go wrong in these situations. Let's see if this is a ghost route or an option. I don't know why we're option routing here. I guess it still kind of sits in the same spot. Yeah, really not a great – yeah, didn't go, that didn't go well. That combo did not go well. Third and four, smash return, uh, one of the best plays in Madden every single year. The tight end corner, get a nice shed. Hits that drag, jukes up field, gets in for seven. So now – 13 seconds, it's about as good as you can get it. I mean, that you know, Gabigol really basically is going to have one play. And so John is going to have to make a decision. Is he going to go for two or is he not going to go for two? And he is going to go for two here. And it looks like he's going to audible out. Let's see what he does. He might actually end up – this is actually not too – this is actually pretty strategic. So what he does here is he calls a timeout. So now you would assume maybe he's just going to go out and kick three. He can still go for two right here. And he can just take a delay a game and then kick his extra point. So I actually like this. He goes, he comes out, sees what Gabigol is coming out in. Then he's able to, okay, let me make a play call specifically for that in this situation. Because if I don't like the look, I can still always huddle out. So comes out in bunch and kind of audible around. Not sure what he wants to do. I, you know, the indecision and decisiveness isn't the greatest thing. Um, but he is going to go to this RPO. This RPO is really good. I think he's only ran it once. When he ran it last time, this guy was wide open. So this would be the read. This is the guy you're looking to do. Uh, if you're Gabigol, basically you've got to sell out and take this away. So you want a hard flat, maybe man up somebody, right, that you're trying to really sell out for the bubble screen because that is the best play, best route, but you have to stop the run too. So you see here the run's not really there. This is open throws it out there, catches it, and gets a terrible animation and is going to end up getting stopped. And Gabigol is going to, provided John doesn't recover an onside kick, Gabigol is going to be able to walk away uh, with the victory. So two brothers playing. Let's see if they actually do the show. Am I going to show the onside kick? Okay. So, yeah, onside kick, Gabigol able to recover it, and then he's just going to be able to kneel it out. So, thanks for watching the video, guys. If you want to get any of my full Madden or NCAA eBooks, it's available by becoming a member of the school.com community. That link is going to be down in the description below.